Code Explain says hi. This is the second part on creating the 2D breakout game using JavaScript. In the last part or the first part, we were able to create a moving ball, added some collision detections. We created a puddle which we can uh, move using the right and the left arrow. When our ball goes beyond the canvas, we reset the ball. The game or the player loses life. Now we still need to add some breaks to the game, add some game statistics like the score, the number of lives, the level, also the sounds. So before going to and watch the second part, you still need to watch the first part. So go and check my channel. So let's go. <music> So before creating our bricks, we need to set some brick properties. The best way to store them or to save those properties is to create an object. So we create an object called brick. The properties are the width, the height, and the offset left, the offset top, and the margin top. Also, we'll set the fill color, then the stroke color. In our game we have many bricks, so we will call this rows. So for example here I have three rows. So I'm gonna say row I set to three. Then I have columns. For example here I have two columns. But in our game we have five columns. Now our bricks here are rectangles. And to draw a rectangle you know that we need the X and Y position of every rectangle. So now we need to save those X and Y position of every brick somewhere. So the best place or the best variable for that is an array. Actually, a two dimensional array. So when we say bricks, it's the array which contains our X and Y position of every brick. And when we say brick, it's the object that contains the properties of our bricks. We said our bricks position are stored inside an array, a two-dimensional array. We need first to create our rows. This is the first, the second, and the third. To create the rows, we need a full loop that starts from zero and ends at two. Two as less than the break that row which we set equals to three if you remember so inside the full loop i will say breaks with index r is equal to an array so here breaks with index zero is the first row with index one is the second row with index two is the third row now each row has columns this is the first column and this is the second column which means that while creating a row, I need also to create the columns, which means I will need another full loop inside the first one. So the first one is to create the rows, and the second one is to create the columns. And inside the full loop, or the second full loop, I will say bricks with index R for the rows, and C for the columns. So, for example, this brick here would have this index. Now, every brick here is an object, an object which has these properties, the X and Y position and the status. We'll talk about these properties in a minute. Let's now define the X property or the X position of every brick. We have here the first brick. This is its index, the second one and the third one. The X position of this first brick is 20 pixels. The second one is 20 pixels plus the width 55 pixels plus 20 pixels. Now for the third one, it's 20 pixels plus 55 pixels plus 20 pixels. 
plus the width it, 55 pixels again, plus 20 pixels. So you can see a pattern here. From this brick here to this one, we added 20 pixels plus 50 pixels. From this to this, we added 20 pixels plus 50 pixels two times. So the next one will add 20 pixels plus 55 pixels three times. Now, to remind you, this is the row and this is the column. So for the row, it's zero. For the column, it's zero. Here, the row is zero and the column is one. Here, the row is zero and the column is two. I said that we added 20 pixels plus 55 pixels two times to 20 pixels which means I can write this line like this. I would say 20 pixels plus 2 times 20 pixels plus 55 pixels. And here I can write this like this. 20 pixels plus 1 time 20 pixels plus 55 pixels. And here I can write 20 pixels plus 0 times 20 pixels plus 55 pixels. So you can see where I am getting with this. So zero here and one and two are just the number of the column. So in general, the x position of a break is given by this equation. So I'm gonna say the column times 20 pixels here is the offset left 55 pixels is the width of the brick plus the offset left of the brick. And I will set this to x position of the brick. Let's now define the y position of every brick. This is all bricks and these are their indexes. Now for the row is 0, the number of the column is 0. The row is 1, the column is 0. The row is 2 and the column is 0. For this one, the y position is the margin top which is 40 pixels plus the offset top which is 20 pixels. So I'm gonna say the y position of this brick here is 20 pixels plus 40 pixels. For this one here it's 40 pixels plus 20 pixels plus 20 pixels the height of the brick plus the offset top 20 pixels. For the third one it's 40 pixels plus 20 pixels plus 20 pixels 20 pixels 20 pixels and 20 pixels. So you can see a pattern here again. So we're adding to 20 pixels here each time 20 pixels plus 20 pixels. Here we added 20 pixels plus 20 pixels just one time. Here we added 20 pixels plus 20 pixels two times. So I can write this in this way. So I'm going to say 20 pixels plus 40 pixels plus two times 20 pixels plus 20 pixels. And this here I'm going to say one time 20 pixels plus 20 pixels. And here I'm going to say 0 times 20 pixels plus 20 pixels. These numbers here are just the number of the row. So I can define the y position of every brick using this equation. So I'm going to say r, the number of the row of the brick times so 20 pixels here is the offset top and 20 pixels here is the height of the brick then plus again the offset top plus the margin top and I will set this equal to y position so now just give me the number of the column and the number of the row and they will give you the definite x and y position of every brick let's update our code we said that we are going to create the rows using this full loop. Then inside I will use another full loop to create the column. And we said that every brick here 
is an object which has these properties. The x position is given by this equation. The y position is given by this position. And the status is set to true. What do I mean by the status here? When the status here is set to true, I mean that the break is not broken. But when I set the, the status to false, I mean that the, that the break is broken. It means that when our ball hit a given break, we need to change the status from true to false. Now I will put this code here inside a function called create breaks. And then each time I will need to create the breaks, I will just go and call that function. Now let's talk about how to draw the breaks. Our breaks are rectangle, right? And to draw all the breaks, I will need to go over our array breaks, which means I will use two full loops. Then I will use an F statement. I will say F breaks that status. Why I have to use this F statement? I have to use this F statement because I will need to check if the breaks that status is set to true which means I need to check if the break is not broken. So I'm not going to show to the user a broken uh, break. I will show just the breaks that are not yet broken. So I will need to check if the breaks that status is true. Then I will set the fill style, which means the color with I will fill my rectangle. I say here break that fill color. This is the property that uh, contains the color of the break. Then I will use the method fill rect, which takes in the x position of the break, its y position, then its width it, and its height. Now this two line of codes where draw a rectangle with this color. Now I need to draw a border or a stroke. So I will need to set the color of the stroke. Then I will use the stroke rect that takes in the same arguments as fill rect. So this way I will draw a stroke. Now I will put this code here inside the function called draw breaks. Draw breaks here will go inside our draw function. Because if you remember in the first part we created a function called the draw which handles all the drawing we do to the canvas. Now let's talk about our ball break collision, like we said in the first part. For example, there is a collision between the ball and the puddle if the ball tends to enter inside our puddle. The same thing goes here. There is a collision between the ball and the break if the ball here tends to enter inside our rectangle which means that its x and y position are inside the break. So I will need to check as their collision between every break in our array and the ball. Right? But I will not check if there is a collision between the ball and the broken break. Because for the computer, the break is always there. It doesn't just show it to the user. So I will need to say f b that status b here is our break i use just the letter b here just because i won't have to write this whole code again so i'm gonna say fb that status so I'm, i need to check if there is a collision only between the ball and the shown or not broken break and now i will need to add an f statement for the collision detection and if there is a collision i will do something so there is a collision between the ball and the break f for example the ball is coming from this side which means the right side of the ball is touching the left side of the uh, of the break which means if this value here the x position of the ball is greater than this value here so i'm going to say f the statement here and also if the ball is coming from this side, which means the left side of the ball is touching the right side of our puddle, which means if this value here is less than this value here. Also, if the bottom of the ball is touching the top of the break, 
which means if this value here is greater than this value here and also if the ball here is coming from the bottom which means if the top of the ball here is less than the bottom of the brick so if all these statements are true this will be true which means there is a collision if there is a collision we need to change the b that status to false which means the brick is broken and then we need to change the delta y or inverse the delta y of the of the ball so we can change its direction and also we need to increment the score by a score unit so when the game start i will set the score to zero and the score unit is a constant which is set to 10 so each time the user break a break i will increment the score by 10. now i will put this code inside a function called ball break collision and this function here will go inside my update function now we need to show the game status text to the user which means we need to show text to draw text to the canvas you will need to set the fill style the color of the text which is white and then the font which is the font size and the font family i will use germania one which i took from google fonts and then I will use the felt text method to draw the text. The felt text here takes in this argument, the text itself, then its x position and its y position. Also, we need to draw an image. So I'm going to say the draw image uh, method, which takes in the image itself, its x and y position and the width it on the height so all the stats images has the same width it on the height which are both equal to 25 pixels now as i will use this code again and again i will put this inside a function called show game stats which takes in these parameters here so the text the x position of the text the y position then the image and the image x position and the y position so for example to show the score to the user i will go and say show game stats this function here that takes in the text which means our score variable then the x position of the score as 35 for the x position then 25 for the y position now for the image the image name is score underscore image which I need to create first so I'm gonna create the score image using the image object then I will need to set the source property of the image the image lives inside our image folder and has this name now the x position of the image is 5 pixels from the left and the y position is 5 pixels from the top I also need to show the number of lives a player has left if you remember we stored the number of lives inside a variable called life its x position is canvas that with it which is here minus 25 pixels and the y position is 25 pixels which means that the text or the lives will be drawn in this place now this is the image which i need to load first like I did for the score image this is our life image it has this x position and this y position I also need to show the number of the level the user is playing which is stored inside a variable called level this is its x and this is its y position so the level or the number of the level will be drawn here then this is the image which I need to load also this is the image we will use this is its x and this is its y position now to keep updating these values here there in the game I need to put these lines of code inside the draw function now let's talk about when it's a game over and what will happen if it's a game over you know that we set 
the life variable to 3, which means that the player has 3 lives to go. If the ball goes beyond the canvas, the player loses a life. We decrement the life variable by 1. So, we need to check if the life is less than 0. If it's true, then it's a game over. When the game starts, we set the game over variable to false. So whenever the life variable is less than zero, we say the game over is true. I will put this inside a function called game over, and this function here will go inside our update function. Now, to remind you, this is our loop function. Inside we have the draw function and the update function. We use the request animation frame to create a loop the request animation frame will call the loop function each time your browser is ready to render the next frame. We call the loop function just one time. Now when it's a game over, we need to stop calling the draw function and the update function, which means we need to stop calling the loop function, which means we need to stop request animation frame from calling the loop function. To do that, we will use an if statement. So if the statement is true, we will call the loop function. If it's not true, we won't call the loop function. So here, it's clear that I will just use the variable game over. So I will say f not game over. If it's not a game over, call the loop function. But if it is a game over, Stop calling the request animation frame. And this should stop the game. Now, when the user break all the breaks in a level, he must go to the next level. So how to check if the user break all the breaks in a level? It's simple, we just need to loop over all the breaks in our breaks array and check if the status of the break is set to false. Here, I will need a variable called is level done, and I will set it to true. Inside our full loops, I will say is level done equals is level done and not breaks that status. For example, let's say the first break here is broken. So we will go and say not false is true because when the brick is broken its status is false so i'm gonna say not false which means true and true here we set as level to true so true and true will return true so now is level done as set to true let's go to the next brick let's say the next brick is also broken so here, this line or the status of the bracks will return false, not false as true, and true, this will remain true. But let's say now the third brack is not broken. So the status here as is, is true, not true is false, and true, so false and true is false. So here is level done is set to false. Now let's say that all the other breaks are broken, which means this will always remain true, but true and false will always remain false. Which means if there is just one unbroken break in the level, this variable here will be set to false. So we must have all the breaks broken so that as level here is set to true. Now, what will happen if as level done is true? What will happen if all the breaks are broken? So here, when we level up, when we go from a level to another one, we increment the number of the level. So we increment the level by one. When the game started, we set the level to one. So I'm going to just say here level plus plus. And also if you can see here, 
we just incremented the number of the rows by one. So I'm going to say break that row plus plus. Then after incrementing the number of the rows, you will need to create the breaks again. We also need to speed up the ball. So I'm going to increment the speed of the ball by 0 0.5. And then I will need to reset the ball position. But now, what if the user just completed all the levels? Or how do we know that the user completed all the levels? To fix that, we need to use a constant called max level, which is 63. So in our game, we have just three levels. When the user reaches the maximum level, we need to stop the game. You already know how to stop the game. We just need to say the game over variable to true. So I will say f the level because we are incrementing the number of the level or the level variable by one each time. So I will say f the level is greater than the maximum level. We set the game over to true. But I don't want this line of codes to run anymore. So I will just go and say return. Now I will put this line of codes inside a function called level up. And this function here will go inside our update function. Let's talk now about the sound. To load a sound, you will create an object, a constant, using the audio object. And then you need to set the source property. So our sounds are inside a folder called sounds. In this way, we will load all the other sounds. Now, when the ball, for example, hit the wall, we need to play this sound. To play a sound, you will just need to say wall sound, the name of the sound, dot play method. Now, let's say the user needs to mute the sounds or to turn off the sounds. For example, to mute this sound, I will say wall sound dot muted and I will set it to true. So if the muted property is set to true, the sounds are turned off. But if instead it is set to false, the sounds are on. I think you're ready now to type in the code, are you? Before that, if you are not subscribed, please hit the button and subscribe and also hit the bell to get notified about every new video. So let's open our text editors. So I think you still have the files from the first part because if you don't, if you lost your files for example, or if you just want to start from this part, uh, which I don't recommend, you will need to go and open your browser, go to our repo on GitHub, so code explained repo, then you will need to find the repos, and find 2D breakout game JavaScript, then you will need to download the files, Open your files. This is the files for the part one. Now you will need to use the, the files for the part two, not the part one. I will go and rename my file or my folder to break out. Then I will open it using brackets, my text editor. Here is our code. I will run a live preview of the files. And here you can see what we have created in the first part of this tutorial. Now, just above the draw function, I will go and create the breaks. The first thing is to create the break object. So the properties are the row, the column, the with it, the height, the offset left, which is 20 pixels, the offset top, 
and also the margin top, the fill color, and the stroke color. Now to create the bracks, I will need a function called create bracks. But first, I will need to create a variable bracks, which is an array. So I'm going to use two full loops, one to create the rows and the other is to create the column. So the first one is for creating the rows and the second one is to create the bricks. So every brick here has an X position, a Y position and a status which is set to true, which means it's not broken yet. So the X position of a brick is given by this equation. And the Y position is given by this position. C stands for column and R stands for row. Now to create the bricks, I will need to call the function create bricks. Create bricks. Now if I go and see or look for the bricks array inside or on my console, I can see the position or the properties of every uh, brick in our array. Let's close this. So now I will need to draw the bricks. For that I will use a function called draw bricks, not just draw. So I will use just uh, the same full loops, but I will need to check if the brick isn't broken. So I'm going to say if the bricks that status uh, is set to true which means the break is not broken. Then I will uh, set the fill style, which is the fill color uh, property of our break. Then I will use the fill rect method, but I will uh, create a, a variable here B just for not to type the whole uh, line of code. Then I will uh, need to draw a stroke. The stroke rect gets in the same uh, arguments. Now the draw brick breaks here goes inside our draw function. Now that I refreshed, you can see the breaks are there. But as you can see here, the ball isn't interacting with them. So we need a collision detection function. So I'm going to call this ball break collision. So I will need again to use the same full loops to loop over our uh, over our uh, breaks and the inside an F statement. So I'm going to say F the ball that X plus the ball that radius, the right side of the ball is getting than the left side of the puddle and so on. So you have seen this in the logic part. Now, if there is a collision, we need to change the direction of the ball. And also, we need to change the status to false. So the, the brick is broken. And also, we need to increment the score by uh, 10. The score unit or wherever you want the unit to be. So the score is a variable, which is set to 0 when the game start and the score unit is set to 10 so each time you broke or you break a break you will uh, we will increment the score by 10 
the collision detection function will go inside our update. So now if I refresh, you can see here that whenever I or the ball collide with a brick, it disappears. And also we increment the user's score. So if I go and look inside my console, so here the score is 60. Now I can check again, it's now 70. So the score here is incremented by 10. Now I will show the game starts. So I will show the levels, the 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 lives and etc. The game starts function will take in the text and its position, the image and its position. To draw a text you will need to set the fill style, so the color of the text which is white, then the font uh, which is the 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 font size and the font family. And then the fill or uh, yeah the fill text which is uh, the method we use to draw text, and then we need to draw an image. So I'm going to use the draw image method, which takes in the image and the x and y position, then the width it and the height. So both equal to twenty pixels. So. I need first to load the image or the images. So I'm gonna load the one for the level. So I call this level underscore image. The one for the life. And the last one for the score. Now that I load the images. I will, need, uh, I will need to go now and uh, show them. So I'll copy this inside my draw function. I'll copy this just three times. So I'm gonna here show the score. This one will show how many lives we still have and the last one for the level. So the text here is score, here is a life and here is level. So I will need to go and create the variable level, which I didn't create it yet. I didn't create yet. And also the max level, which is set to 3. The text x and y position. The image is score underscore image. It's 5 pixels for both the x and y. For the life, the x position is the canvas that with it minus 25 this is the y position the image then the position the x position of the image and the y position of our image the x position this is the y position of the level this is the level image its x position and again the y position so now if i refresh you can see the status text of our game but as you can see there there is not uh, the font isn't loaded yet so I will need to add or to link my index.html to a Google font which is Germania 1 now if I refresh you can see that the font family is changed, but I have here a problem with the uh, live image. For the live image, I forgot to uh, update the image, so we need to use this one. I just uh, updated it uh, in the background. So now if I refresh, you can see the image uh, is changed. Now let's go inside our game.js file. And set the game over rule. So I'm gonna say if life is less than zero, then we set the game over to true. I need to create the game over variable first. I'm gonna say let game over set to false when the game start. Then inside our uh, update, we will add the function game over, 
and here I will say F not if it's not a game over you will need to uh, run this line of code otherwise you don't so let's check that I'm gonna lose the three times and see what will happen so you can see here that the game uh, stopped that's what we want now let's go and create the level up function so I will need to check every brick if it's broken or not so to check I will need a variable called is level done which see which is uh, set to true then I will uh, I will use the full loop to check if all the breaks are broken inside they will say is level equals is level done and not breaks that status f is level done after I checked all the breaks we need to increment the number of the rows create the breaks again speed up the ball and then reset the ball position and increment the number of the levels by one but we still need to stop the game if we reach the maximum level so I'm gonna say game equals true uh, I will check that but I need to set the number of the rows to just one then I will copy this uh, inside my update function so we'll see what will happen if we go to the next level after breaking all the breaks oh yeah you can see now that we have two rows let's now go to the components and load uh, the sevens they are the last thing in our tutorial so I'm gonna uh, load the one following the ball hit the wall they are inside our sounds uh, folder name is wall.mp3 I will just copy this uh, five times or four times then this is the life lost when the user loses life the one thing uh, the one for when the paddler hit uh, the ball the one for when we win or when we go from a level to another one and the last one is for when the brick uh, is hit by a ball now let's go and play the sound here the wind sound for when we go to another level the one for when uh, so when the ball uh, has a collision with the brick we play the sound Also, when the ball and the puddle collide, we need to play the seventh. Also, when the user loses life. And here, when the wall hit the ball. Now, I refresh, you can hear the seventh. I will try to complete this level to see if all the sounds are working. Come on. Oh, uh, there's a problem. So inside our level up function, where is the level up function? I need to put this inside or outside the F statement. So I will go and save this. Let's complete this level again. Ah, it was close.
Come on. Ah, now you can hear the sounds. That's good. So let's now go to our index.html and add the sound button. So I will load the, uh, the image, which is the sound on. So when the game starts, the sounds are on. So I will set the width to 30 pixels, the height also, the cursor pointer to, to give the feeling that it's clickable. Then some other uh, style or CSS properties. So I will need to change the left property. Okay, now I will need to select, I will go now and select the sound element using the get uh, the get element by id method and then I will add an event listener which is on click on click we will run the function audio manager the audio manager here will do two things the first one is to change the image source from the one for the sound on to the one for the sound off which means I will need the uh, uh, get attribute source and then I will create a variable called sound image and based on the image source if the image source for example was on I will change it to off else I will change it to, to on then I will say sound element that set attribute source to sound image now if you click on the image, you will toggle the images. Now I will need to mute and unmute the sounds. So I will need to check if the sound was mute, I will set it to false. If it was not muted, I will set it to true. I will do the same thing for all the sounds. Now let's check. So here the sounds are on. If I click now, the sounds are off. Now we need to share the game over message to the user. So I will need to go to our index.html and create a, a dev with the game over ID. Then the image for when the user win the game. And then the image for when the user loses the game. And then the play again to restart the game. I will need now to add some styling. So the game over position is absolute the width is the width of our canvas the same for the height then I will uh, add the background uh, a black with an opacity of 0 0.5 then I will set the display property to none as I won't need to show this uh, dev until it's a game over The styling for when you want the game also set to display uh, to none. The styling for when you lose the game also set to none. The display property also set to none. Now for the restart. Uh, button I will also need to change the cursor property so it gives the feeling that it's clickable now let's handle this using JavaScript 
So I will need first to select the element. So the game over element. Also the restart element. You lose element and you win element. So when the user click on the play again button, we need to refresh the page. So I'm going to say location dot reload. Then I will create a function for when the user win the game. So I will call this show you win, which will just set the game style property or display property to block for the game over and you won. And in the other side, for when you lose the game, we will just change the display property to block for you lose block. Now here goes the show you win and here show you lose. Now let's try and win the game. Okay, so this is the last, the last level. I speeded up the video so you won't have to wait a long time for me to complete all the levels. So now you can see that we have here our image. If I click play again, the game will restart. Here I will try to lose the game. And here it shows the game over message. We have here a problem from our uh, fonts uh, family for the play again. So I'm gonna just add the font family and set it to Germania 1. So here Germania 1. Now you can see here that the font uh, family has changed. So this is it guys, this is the end of the, our tutorial, see you in the next one, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.